Well, we know that there are many different types of dog breeds, but is one better than the other? Animal behaviorist Wendy Ma joins us this morning to answer that question and other viewer questions that we have this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Okay, so we just had the Westminster Dog Show, and of course, we see a lot of different breeds. The Fox Terrier, I believe, one, right? Fox Terrier one. Okay, best in show. so is there, I mean, and so many people will argue that, you know, their dog's breed is the best, <laughs> but is there an overall best breed? Uh, no, it, you know, it really is a personal preference. Okay. Um, there is, however, an overall um, general preference in the United States. We have um, rank ordered. 10 top, and those 10 top have been really consistent over the years. Oh, okay. um, the top three being the Labrador Retriever, the German Shepherd, and the Golden Retriever. Ah. The Labrador has held number one spot in the United States for 26 years. Wow. According to the American Kennel Club. Interesting. That's, that's a long time. That is a long time. <laughs> and why do you think that is? Um, you know, it, it, the top 10 does change like worldwide as opposed to the United States. I just think that that just shows that the United, people in the United States like that real that companion dog. You know, that's right. what the Labradors, they're, they're sporting dogs, they're, they're field dogs, but they really were bred to be really good companions and an overall rounded out dog. Right. And of course we have Brody joining have Brody. us this morning. What what type of breed is Brody? Brody's a Norwich Terrier. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so for me, one of the smartest. Aww. There you go. <laughs> and he is so smart and well behaved. But I guess that helps when your owner is an animal behaviorist. <laughs> um, and then of course, okay, so that was the Westminster dog show, but you were saying, you were talking in the break, there's another dog show here on in Hawaii that's coming up. What's that? We have our own dog show coming up, the Hawaiian Kennel Club uh, dog show. It's going to be March 3rd and 4th, Saturday and Sunday okay. at the Neil Blaisdell. So if people want to come down, take a look at all the different breeds. You know, it's a really good idea to research the breed that you you may want to consider mm -hmm. having in your family. So that's a wonderful place to go talk to the breeders, talk to the other people who own the, that type of dog, and see the adult dog, not right. just the cute puppy. Uh, because they do look so different, right, once they do grow up. So if, if you know that maybe changes something for you. But all dogs are cute at all stages. Okay, so we also have more questions that were sent in. Um, we want to know, okay, so this is still along the breed line. Is one particular breed smarter than the other? I know you were saying Brody's very smart. Brody's very smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there has been that, that um, concept in people's minds that there is a smart dog and a dumb dog. And it really started to be perpetuated. Um, oh, I forget the guy's name. Um, wrote a book, The Intelligence of Dogs. Mm. And... He looked at 110 different breeds of dogs based on basically an arbitrary set of working and obedience behaviors because we humans arbitrarily picked out these behaviors, come, sit, down, stand, stay, heal, as an you know, a level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of gave people the idea that there are smart ones and dumb ones. But I beg to differ. You know, I would say a golden retriever doesn't make a really good beagle. Oh, right, right. <laughs> but a beagle is really smart at being a beagle. Right. And sniffing things out and beagling. <laughs> beagling. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> so for me, um, I think it's an individual dog. It's an individual breed kind of thing and not an overall this dog is smarter than this dog. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So we actually have a question that was sent in. She, uh, the viewer says, I just got a corgi puppy and she really bites. I've tried the yelping thing and it helps sometimes. It's when she nips at me when I'm walking around the house that's the real problem. She won't listen to the yelps and nips hard. What can I do? Well, again, yes, it does kind of go into what we were talking about. A corgi was bred mm -hmm. to be a herder, and they nip at the heels of the cattle that they're herding. Right, right. So this corgi probably... It's in its, it's in its nature. It is, and it probably doesn't have the job to go out and herd cattle. Right. So to express that, that genetic 
uh, predisposition, it just does it to the family. Mm. Um, so to get that dog to stop nipping at people's heels, is it possible? Yes. Does it take a little bit more time and patience in training this? Yes, because right. we're training against the dog's nature. This dog probably, if a farmer or you know, a rancher were looking at it, would probably say, I want that one. That one's a smart one. Uh -huh. But it sounds like this is a family pet. Right. So it's a little different. Um, it doesn't mean that this dog is dumb, right. stupid, can't learn. It just needs a little more time. Okay, good yeah. to know. All right, well, awesome. Thank you so much, Wendy, for You're joining welcome. us. And thank you, Brody, as well. Uh, I love all the answers that you always have to these questions that I would have never thought of, you know, that have an actual, you know, a reason why behind it. That's yeah. so much more than just bad behavior. It's in its nature. It is. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right.